Can you guys see me? I can't see. You look sad. Okay. Alright, cool. So... I'm working on, on two streams right now. So... Hold on. What's up? Um, I guess I'll fix the thumbnail. So yeah, I just had some bugs with this. I was trying to stream it. Um, anyways, yeah. So if you weren't in the stream last time, the other day, uh, I texted my dad and I told him that I would pay his rent. Uh, one more time tomorrow and give him his money and then he had to do then he had to you know do it himself he had to handle it himself and as expected i get the guilt trip and i don't know i don't know a lot of people are going to probably when this is said and done i guess i'm going to get a lot of crap for it um but typically when i tell my dad i'm like look dude you gotta support yourself he, he just gets all defensive and very like victimized i guess so i guess i'll read i'll read what i said to him in the text message about me saying i'll pay your rent and give you money one more time on friday and after that you're on your own and you need to give me the car back if you don't and i'm gonna sell it because that's 500 dollars a month for me it's, it's it's stupid i know why is it 500 it's because i sold a car that I still, I, I traded in a car that I still had payments on to get a car I could Uber with if I ever needed backup money. But anyways, he's healthy again, right? He's healthy. So I said, look, man, so Friday is the last time I'm going to pay a rent. I'm, I'm going crazy having to support both of us. I can't do it anymore. So there are a couple options. You can come with me to the DMV and get a Utah driver's license. So that way you could Uber, do Grubhub, whatever it is to pay your rent, the car insurance, or you can give me the car back. And I said, I love you, but I'm destroying my drive and ability to work because of all of this. If you don't text me back by Friday, I'm coming to get the car. If you disappear with the car, I'll have to report the car is stolen. Let me know what you want to do. Then the whole day went by and he didn't text me. So that was at 1030, right when the stream ended. And so at 830, I said, so what's the plan? And... Finally, he responded. He said, you've kind of blindsided me today and kind of set off my anxiety problem. First of all, we've had this conversation many, many times and he's like, I'll do better. I will come over more and I'll, I'll help support and I'll make my videos, which when he says I'll come make videos, he means he'll talk in front of the camera and I'll make the video, which is really what that means. But anyways, he says, I need to get a license and other items. Yeah, for sure. I just need to settle myself down for a bit so I can think still need to check your brakes and stuff possibly tomorrow, and then we can go on from there. So that was yesterday. Tomorrow was yesterday. He never came over tomorrow. He never texted me. He never called me. None of that. Uh, anyways, I said, I can't pay your stuff anymore. I'm literally like dying here, like my, like my work ethic and my cr creative ability. I said, you told me you were coming over to help me and you ghosted me for five days. It's back to the same thing before you got sick. You know, that's how it was. He would be good and he'd say, I'm coming over and he wouldn't come over anymore. And then he got sick and I was worried about him because you, you worry about your dad, right? That was all real. This is real. This is real emotions, like live. And, uh... Dev, you didn't have to do any of that. Um, so yesterday came and I sent him a text last night at 9 o'clock and I said, so you didn't come over today. What's the plan? No response. I said, are you on drugs or something? Why have you been a ghost even before I blindsided you? And he said, it looks like you had company today anyhow. And I was like, what? What? And he said, anyhow, and you don't call me. You just text me bombshells, and that's all. Just trying to sort out my thoughts and whatnot. I could be dead, but you wouldn't know. I told you, this is what he does. He goes, he goes to this whole victim mindset. 
like I told it's, it's just gaslighting. I'm I'm very aware of it, right? And uh, like when I text him these things, it goes for the whole guilt trip, you know. And then he said, "Woke up with a nasty headache this morning. A lot of thought." And I said, "Stop guilt tripping me. This is gaslighting. I've done nothing wrong to you." I said, I can't, I hate it, but you need to be self-fulfilled. Um, don't be mad, don't be stressed. This is out of love. Um, he said, didn't say anything, just, wanted, just figured things out. And I said, don't you want to support yourself? Don't you want to... Be independent he said that's for sure and I said okay so on Friday we can go to the DMV and get a Utah license then you can come do some driver jobs no problem okay he said yeah fine I said Lyft Uber Grubhub etc they're all hiring at least right here Amazon's even hiring I said why did you disappear for a week and he just said K I said, what have you been doing since Friday? The last time I saw my dad, the last time I talked to my dad was Friday when I took him flying with me to get him out of the house and to get him in some fresh air. And he told me after the flight course he was going to be over to come help me fix my emergency brake in a Jeep because the handle needs to be adjusted. And then he just ghosted me for five days. Um, he said, I've been here, had stuff on my mind lately. I'll figure it out. And I said, you always say that. Every time I say, dude, what's up? Why have you been ghosting me? He always says, he always says, uh, I've had stuff on my mind. I'm like, well, can you tell me what's on it? Like, do you need help? Do you need to see a therapist? Do you need to go to a doctor? Like, you need to get some antidepressant meds? I can, uh, it's no big deal. My issues, I'll, I'll figure it out. That's what it says. No big deal. My issues, my deal. I'll get it. And I said, I said, um, your issues affect other people, man. Me being a big one. Don't you care about me? I tried to like flip the script a little bit. And I was like, why do you lead me on and let me destroy myself working trying to provide for us when I know you can work? You're a fully capable person. I've seen you. I'm not going to call him on stream. He's probably watching the stream. Actually, I called my grandparents after the stream on Tuesday. And uh, they didn't answer. <laughs> I guess they saw the stream. I guess they're pretty pissed off. Normally, they don't. if they don't answer, they always call me back. But they're mad that I'm... I don't want to be a sponge, or I don't want to support, I don't know. And he said, <laughs> he said, well, nothing was done intentionally to you. I was, I was getting sick, and then finally getting over it, and then two months later, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much getting going now. Still slow, but 110% better. Sorry for being sick. He says, sounds like a different outcome would have been better for a lot of other folks, but didn't go this way. Maybe next time. And so he's talking about, he's talking about, because uh, when he got sick, he almost died. When he got sick, he had like pneumonia and stuff, and he was a smoker, and he had a bunch of phlegm in his lungs, and he almost died. And so that's, that's what he's talking about when he's talking about the outcome. He does this guilt tripping thing. He's like, if I if I would have just died when I was sick, Josh, it would have been better for a lot of other people. Even you, your mom and your dad, or your mom and your grandma back in Georgia. And I said, you're really hurting our relationship by treating me like an ATM. Don't put family don't put family issues on the internet. Hey, listen here. Listen here. I don't have anyone else to talk to. <laughs> My family thinks that I'm a piece of shit because I put limits. My grandparents don't talk to me. My mom doesn't talk to me. I don't know where my fucking sister is. Like, you guys are like, you're in this together, basically. So I'm just talking to you guys, you know? Oh, look, fitness triple threat boss. Get the fuck out. Okay. He says... I feel pretty much back to myself as much of that, but I'm ready to keep on. I said, he says, sorry for not being sick, interfered with stuff, would have rather not had it. At least I've got blood people want now, but I'll just keep it 
Wait, what? Yeah, he's, he's such a boomer. It's hard to read his text. And I said, I said, uh, stop talking about being dead, dad. And he said, just the facts would have solved your issues and the ones back home as well. Would be a relief for all of us. If I had known, I would have waited that extra date and I would have not gone to the ER and I would have died. That's what he said. This is what he, this is what he does when I say, dad, you got to get it together. I can't support you anymore. This is what he does. This is what he does, dude. He goes down this whole guilt trip where he starts like saying, I wish I, I would have just died. It would have been easier for you, Josh. Like, these are real fucking text messages. <laughs> I'm not making this up. This is though, this is really hard to deal with, you know, like, and then you go and you drive, you drive down to his house and you stand there in front of him and you see this, you see this old man in a robe that can't even, you know, talk. And you have to say, I'm done. Give me the keys. Like it's, it's. It's easy to say when you're watching it, but it's hard when you're the person in it. I feel you're milking this for attention or money. Shut up, Mario. If I was milking it for attention or money, I'd make a GoFundMe and then use all the money to buy something. I'm not I'm not asking for any money. I'm not asking for any donations. I'm just talking about the reality of my life right now. And I said, you need to see a therapist or something. You need some medications. Like I, 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 I'm trying to help you best I can, but money is not the way to do it. I think you should move abroad. That's not how it works. You need a visa. You got two dogs. Like I don't have anyone to go hang out with. You know, like all the people, all my family, they've kind of like disowned me because I've made it a public thing. They, they, they were always like, we're very private people, Josh. We're very private. We don't want this getting out. I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of messed up. Like, is that because is that you know it's wrong? It's embarrassing. Well, I mean, yeah, it is, right? But maybe other people have something that could help us that we haven't thought about. What, what, what about that, Grandma? What about that, Grandpa? Have, have you thought about this? This isn't a point to shame. This, this isn't a, you know, it's... Did you take the car? I, no, on Friday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is one of the biggest days in my life, on two occasions. Um, I'll see how it goes. He hasn't texted me at all today so far. The last thing I said was you need to see a therapist. So if you're here watching, Dad, I'm not, I'm not doing this out of hate. I'm not doing this because I don't love you, because I do. I just, I want you to be successful. I want you to be able to support yourself. And, and, and everyone here in the stream wants that too, Dad. Grandma, grandpa, like everybody in the stream wants you to be successful. We, we're not mad. It's pretty shitty what you're doing, but we want you to be independent and successful and recover. And that's what I want. But I can't be an ATM. Take the keys. It's a little bit hard to do. I've already, I've already gone down this road once. <laughs> Actually, my sister, my sister stole the car that I gifted to my dad for his birthday before it broke down, and she got in a hit and run, which made my insurance go up. So my sister stole the car, got in a hit and run. They called me. They thought it was me because it was my license plate in my name. And uh, I, so I said, I called the police and said, all right, well, can I just go get the car? And they said, you have to give them 48 hours before we can do anything. So. What's happening tomorrow? Um, it's, so, so tomorrow... Uh, I got to... I got to... He's either has to come with me to the DMV to get a Utah license and sign up for Lyft, Uber, Grubhub, Uber Eats, all the delivery stuff that I can think of that he can apply to and get a job like next day and start making money. Or he has to give me the car back and figure it out. That's that's the ultimatum. That's where we're at. And But the thing is, I think that he'll go with me and he'll go to the DMV and he'll get his license, but he won't do anything. He won't do the job. He won't. He won't use my car to make the money. 
Why does he not continue with his channel? I don't know, man. He told me he was coming over on Friday, and he didn't. He just disappeared, and I said, what you doing, man? Where you been? No, no response. Sorry, I'm not trying to ignore donations. I appreciate all that, but you don't have to do any of that. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying. This is, I'm not trying to make a pity party. I'm just trying to keep you guys in the know because I literally can't talk to other people about this. Can't talk to my own family about it. Uh, I yeah, I could talk to HR about it, but I'm not trying to be a big baby. And it's like we we've dated for a while, but not like she knows anyways. So to be honest, maybe one day I'll host a meetup after this whole thing and we can hang out and I can actually make some friends. He should be working for you, period. Yeah, he should. He should edit my videos or do my social media posts or something. Just something. Write articles. There's a million things that people could do. I think he's in a funk. Well, he's been in a funk for five years, um, starting May 22nd. He's been in he's been in a funk for that long. So, I I first brought my family out to Utah when they were homeless uh, back in 2015. So, May something 2015. So it's been this way for five years. Besides the whole odd jobs on and off, and, and my mom was here, my sister was here, and they and I gave them my apartment in my name, which again they smoked in when I told them not to because it's a no smoking complex, which gave me a twelve hundred dollar refurbished bill at the end of the lease, and uh, then my grandparents got him another apartment. But anyways, it's been it's been like this for five years, dude. It hasn't just been a funk. It's five years of this. My mom left him basically. She lives in Georgia with my grandma. And then um, my sister just has crackhead boyfriends. It's just real difficult to, you know, I, like I was thinking about it after I texted him that. It was just like a real up and down emotions, you know, real up and down for a while. I was like, I was like, uh, good, finally, I don't have to deal with this anymore, but like, when I think about my dad and I hanging out, I think about it in rose tinted goggles. I think about him coming over and us hanging out and working on things on the house and us hanging out and me showing him memes and stuff and funny videos. But I, and then like my brain forgets about all the shitty stuff. It's like if you think about the ex girlfriend or ex boyfriend that you have, you know, the, you 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 see that the rose tinted glasses there. Like you you remember all the fun stuff, but like. Your brain wants to forget about all the crappy stuff, and I have to keep remembering. It's like sometimes I want to I want to talk to my best friend or my ex best friend. See, it slipped. There's your Freudian slip right there. Sometimes I want to talk to him. Sometimes I want to play PUBG games with him, you know, or I want to play Halo with him. And then I'm like, oh yeah, you fucked my girlfriend. Never mind. And it's the same thing with my dad. Is there social security? Uh, he's 58, so he can't get social security. He was a good guy. Like my dad is a good guy. He, he it's just a, he was independent for his whole life, and now all of a sudden he's just flip flopped to being, you know. The, I guess one of the, one of the big scaries that I think about is there, okay. So I live in Salt Lake City, right? And there's a lot of people that stand on corners with a with a cardboard with a cardboard sign that says anything helps, you know, but. You don't know who actually needs the help and who's just using that money to go buy drugs, and it's it's difficult because you want to help them but you're not you're not sure. And what, I guess one of my biggest fears would would be to drive past the corner, and see that be my dad holding one of those signs up, you know. And that's like that would like destroy me <laughs> to see that happen. Forgive and forget. It's hard. It's hard when it drains your bank account. You know. Did he get a stimulus check? I wouldn't know. Why would he tell me? 
pay half his rent. No, I don't want to pay any of his rent because I paid all of his rent for five years. And every time he's like, I'll come over and help. I'll come up like, ain't no free seats at my table. Not if you're a fully capable person, which you are physically fully capable person. Mentally, yeah, you probably need to see a therapist to get some depression meds or something. But like, go do it then. Don't ghost me. So no one else has helped. My sister has helped nothing ever in the past five years. All she does is just go find meth head crackhead boyfriends. And then sleeps on their couch. And then gets on Tinder and finds a new one when they kick her out. Actually, I don't know. April, if you're watching this, I actually don't know. But you should help. You should help. You should help our parents. Because right now you're just being a piece of shit. Why does he get a minimum wage job? Yeah, you and me both. Why do you hate PHP? It was a joke. I don't actually hate PHP. I like PHP. It's like one of my most proficient languages, actually. What's going on with your dad? Um, I'm giving my dad an ultimatum for, for, for tomorrow, for Friday, or I'm going to cut him off because he's doing the exact he's doing the exact same thing he's been doing since before he got sick. And when he was sick, I was very, very... I was concerned about him, right? I didn't want him to die. And he does this thing where if you tell him that you're going to cut him off, he's like, oh, well, I should have just been dead. I should have just, it would have been easier for everyone if, if when I was sick, I just waited an extra day to go to the ER. That way I would have died because he almost actually died. Like if he did go that day, he would have died. And he's, he's like, it would have been easy on your, on your, on your mom back home and my grandparents and my parents. And it would have just been easier. I'm like, Dad, stop talking about that. You can't, you need help, man. Like, do you need to see a therapist? You need, like, what, you need some medicine? Like, what's going on? Like, it's just issues, Josh. I'll figure it out. And I was like, you always say it's just issues in my head. I'm just, you triggered me and my anxiety problem. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You never talk about any of this. And I call you all the time and you don't answer. Do you think you might be depressed? Possibly. I, I would highly recommend therapy. I would recommend it for my dad. I think my therapy is flying airplanes, not paying someone to care for an hour. <laughs> if, if therapy works for you, yeah, you, you're great. For me, it's, I'm good. I've always been kind of self-sufficient, stoic. That doesn't mean I don't have emotions though, you know? Like, I, I would rather spend $400 that I'd spend on therapy and go spend that on flying an airplane when I can be in my element, just cruising. That's when I'm in my mind, thinking that things are good, you know, that's therapy for me. It's like some people go fishing for therapy or whatever. If you were rich, you would support your dad for life. If I was rich, I would buy my dad a house and just give him a weekly amount of money and have him buy a car and just... Uh, to be honest, it's so fucked up to say, but I would just say, I just want to give you everything that you need, Ted, so that you can be self-sufficient so that I don't have to deal with you anymore, so that I can just focus on living my dream because right now, my finances and my financial future is totally at risk because of you. But like, then there's the other side of me that's like, Josh, you only get one dad and you get didn't get to choose him. You should try to be the best son possible and support him because he's he's been there for you when your car broke down in the middle of nowhere. You know, he drove out two hours to pick me up and, and it's just... More weights, bro. Do you lift? Oh, dude, I, I love lifting. Right now, the, the gyms are closed, so lifting has just kind of been body weight. Your dad watches your streams? I'm not sure. Probably my whole family's watching my stream right now, honestly. And it's like, I'm not trying to be the douchebag. When I brought you guys out here, I wanted to help you, and I wanted you to have a second life, and I was willing to be part of it. But now, I can't even live my own. Why not try for disability? I don't know. Well, Josh, let's make some money then. Yeah, dude. I mean, you don't want to chase money. You got to chase value. Money is a, is a byproduct of making people laugh or giving them information or something like that. Lately, uh, lately I've been making the skits. That's That's been kind of like a creative outlet for me. And yeah, they're kind of funny. And they keep my mind occupied because it's a lot of work to make those. So that's what I've been doing. 
I've been thinking about more. I don't know. I like making skits. That's like what I actually like doing. I don't know if you guys like them, but it seems to be okay. I mean, yeah, they're funny and I'm all happy and I'm like, this is great. And like YouTube video, but then like there's this other side that's going on behind in my real life that I'm like thinking about seeing my dad on a corner homeless one day. It really sucks. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully he gets his Utah license and he comes with me to the DMV and we get, we get him Ubering and lifting and he uses my car to make money and be self-sufficient and then we can have a, a nice father-son relationship like you're supposed to have. Blood isn't blood. I've, I, yeah, I learned that at a young age. Twelve ounce curls, bro. <laughs> You're not being a good son by enabling your dad's behavior. Yeah, I know, I know, I understand. And it w this has probably been like, literally, I've had these exact same text messages maybe, maybe twenty two, twenty three times now. It's always just just thinking a lot whenever he disappears. Just thinking a lot about stuff. About what, man? I'm here for you. Let me call you. And then I call him. I'm like, hey, you want to talk? No answer. Hey, you want to come over? Hey, can I come over? And then I'll come over and he won't let me in. Sometimes he won't even answer the door. Maybe he's asleep and just doesn't know I'm there. But I'll text him and I'll call him, try to wake him up. No answer. It's really difficult, man. Can you even live on Uber Lyft? Yeah, you can. He doesn't have that much living expenses. He said, yeah, I'll go with you Friday, but we'll see tomorrow. I just, I, I just wish this would like be over, you know, like, I just want to have a Thanksgiving dinner with my own family without resenting them. I just want to have a Christmas sit down, you know, and like cook food and just be a regular family again. And it sucks that I can't do that. The only other family I have is you guys, which sounds cringe to say, or if I want to go hang out with HR's parents, it's just like. What I see in my head was when I was a little kid, you know, like, I know that's not real life anymore and it will never be. So I don't know. Sometimes when people are like, oh, me and my dad are doing this. I'm like, it must be fucking nice. <laughs> I say it like with a, with a tone of anger, but underneath, I mean it like, I wish I had that. <laughs> He's going to go off when he sees this. Sounds depressing, needs help. Could be, I don't know. But he won't come with me, and he won't come over, and he won't let me pick him up and take him anywhere to get get, get stuff. What about your previous corporate family? There you go. It's clear he won't appear tomorrow. He, he, he'll he probably come tomorrow because I, the last time I gave him money was last Friday, which is a weekly agreement. I gave him $120 last Friday, which is more than enough money because he doesn't do anything. $120 a week for food for one person. And I know my grandparents are giving him money, so it's not just that. Like He's getting more money. So tomorrow he'll, he'll want his re-up, you know? Like... <laughs> So he'll, he'll probably sh so tomorrow I have flight lessons, and he'll probably show up. And here's the, all right, look, I'm just gonna say it, y'all. But this is actually kind of sad, and I'm aware that it's really sad. Maybe I shouldn't say it. Shit, I don't want it to be like sympathy or sympathy story with Josh, but like, fuck it, whatever. So tomorrow, tomorrow I'm flying, I'm flying solo. Tomorrow I'm doing my first solo flight in an airplane and this has probably been one of the greatest achievements of my life so far in my 29 years of being on this earth will be being able to hop in a plane and fly it alone and i know that my family's not gonna fucking be there and it fucking sucks like i'll film it and i'll post it and i don't give a fuck if anybody watches it because it's important to me
Like I just, like I just, I just got back this morning from. Let me let me collect myself. Um. I just got back from the dock. I got my third class medical certificate this morning. And everything is good. So tomorrow I'm doing my first solo flight. And I'm, I'm probably going to try to put my GoPro or 360 cam in there. And I'll film it and I'll upload it. And I'll get out of the cockpit. And you would want to hug your family, right? Because <laughs> it's been such a dream. They're not going to fucking be there. Yeah, so tomorrow is going to be a pretty awesome day, but also a pretty shitty day. Sometimes it's like the only thing that motivates me to do anything is knowing that one day I'll be flying an airplane, going to visit you guys with my, with my red 8K camera, coming to make documentaries about whatever it is you're building and help you build it and build a brand and then you can be successful and not have to deal with corporate. Like, just look for yourself. I try to, I do my best, you know, but also I want people to be better, you know? I want people to want more and I want to help them. But what we're finding out is that you can't help people that don't want to be helped. And then when you cut it off, they say, oh, wait, 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 I'll change. That's what, we've, that's, what that's been my life lesson, so. Can you stream the flight? Yeah, dude, I kind of want to focus on flying the airplane. I, also, I have Sprint, and Sprint sucks anything like a 500 feet AGL. I'm not getting any service, so. My dad was not at my graduation. I mean, my dad wasn't at my graduation. My dad wasn't at my either wedding. I mean, it's it's I'm I'm used to this kind of shit. It's just. You see other people and you're like, I want that. <laughs> Whatever. But this is how people become old and mean and angry and like resentful at everyone. And I'm really not like that. I'm resentful towards corporate for sure because they kept removing my livelihood. It, I'll give you that. But like, I'm not resentful about life and I, I don't try to be cynical, but this is all I know. What altitude do you fly at normally? So field level is 4,600 feet. Uh, there's a class B airspace above me, so I can't bust 6,000 feet. So I'll just be in pattern altitude doing takeoffs and landings tomorrow alone, but that'll be 5,600 AGL. Yep. I've been going three days a week. This isn't healthy, Josh. It's actually really healthy for me. This helps. Getting it out, talking about it. Like, I've... I, I journal. I journal. Like, the, I have more detailed journals. And sometimes, you know, like... Maybe you guys can learn a thing or two about what it looks like in reality to have to deal with this. I don't... I never thought it'd be me. Don't you care about what HR girl may think of you? No. The gym's a good way? Yeah, dude. Tomorrow, May 1st, right? So the gym's open up. Tomorrow, I can guarantee you, I'm hitting the gym, dude. I'm lifting heavier than I've ever lifted tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, it probably won't happen since I haven't done it in a while. So I'll probably be like, oh, why are these 20 pounds so heavy? Ugh. <laughs> How many hours left until the exam? I think I have a little over 20 hours right now. 
So I have to do 10 hours solo and then 10 more hours with my instructor and that's 40 hours and then I could go go do the check ride. But there's a lot of like details like ground school stuff that I need to work on. Like all the different certifications you need, all the different acronyms. Like the ground school stuff is like the tedious part. But the flying the airplane, I've been doing, I've been doing that basically solo the whole time. Well, not the whole time, but like recently for the past month, I'd say I've been flying the airplane solo, but like. My instructor Nick has just been chilling with me. There are a couple things I messed up on where he's like fixing, but. Every time I open up, they say people have it worse than you. Yeah. No planes cost a lot of money. Yeah, they do. For sure. I mean, probably like a new Jeep. You could get a, a used plane for like the cost of a new Jeep. How was keto? I'm still doing it. It's good. He said therapy is not for you, but I think if you found the right one, it helped. No, because I, I need that money. I want that. I want to spend that money on going to fly planes. Like, I'm, I'm good. I don't want to spend that money to pay someone to ask me, how does that make you feel, Josh? I'm, it's, I know there's more to it, right? I, I understand that being a little facetious. I know there's more to it, but like, that's an hour of my time that I don't, like, I'm good. I'll digest this myself. And I want to use that money and that time to go fly airplanes or go ride my motorcycle or whatever. Like, that's how I deal with shit. Lift weights, you know? I read a lot of books. As long as you don't buy a boat, yeah. If your channel was banned, what would you do? That's a good question. Maybe you go back to teaching code. I could still do that. I could teach people freelance. I could teach people how to build a brand. I could teach people audio editing, video editing, color grading, marketing, SEO, how to build websites, how to freelance websites, how to freelance video. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I could do, I guess. I have a lot of skills. I love these emotes. Yeah. Are you able to cover the cost for your license? That's literally the only thing I spend money for myself on. That's what I've been saving for. And it feels every time I go, every time I swipe the card, or every time they bill it to me after the session's over, I'm like, fuck, so much money. Oh no, Josh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be working to do things that you enjoy in life because you, you know your dad's going to need this money. That's where my brain goes automatically. <laughs> You got to pay your dad's medicine again, you know, like, but then I'm like, wait, no, we're not doing this anymore. You can live your own life. You can actually do something that you want for once, Josh, which feels, it feels wrong. And I know that's wrong to feel guilty about doing something that you enjoy when it's your life. Because then you get called selfish and then you get guilt tripped. Okay, well, I guess I'll just go disappear into the mountains, Josh. Be with Bigfoot. It's your path to become rich. I have no idea. Rich is a mindset. Wealth is a mindset. Why only teaching? Why don't you want to work as a dev anymore? It's just not fun for me. It's not fun for me. I don't like it. I don't. No, number one, I can't really find a product that I I'm passionate about, that I care about, that I want to spend eight hours coding. Number two, I don't want to be told my worth. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of reasons I just don't want to. I don't like deving as a job. I like devving as a part of a process to get to a product that I can then sell product or do something with that product. But it's like coding is always a part of the process for me, a part, a single tool of the process, not the entire life of what I want to do. Not not everything to me. Even there's not really a job that does that, so you got to... You're feeling guilty because they manipulate you, yeah. What's your favorite book? Probably... Unscripted by MJ DeMarco. Maybe Rich Dad Poor Dad. What, were you always the clutch in your family? No. It's just when I graduated and got my first job. They were all like really... Oh, Josh has the engineering degree. He makes a lot of money. Let's... Oh, Josh. 
Like... Does your wife from Finland know that you're a pilot? I have no idea, dude. I don't talk to her. She's not my wife. She's probably somebody else's. Have you tried calling his bluff? Yeah, and so I drove down there and the car was gone and I didn't know where he was and he wouldn't answer my phone calls. And I'm not just gonna like, what do I just sit there in front of a door for five hours until he comes back? Like I have stuff to do, I have to work, I have to make money. <laughs> Is unscripted better than Millionaire Fastlane? I would read both, but they're pretty similar. I'd probably say there's like a 75% overlap. Unscripted maybe takes it to the extra relatable level. So what happened? Catch me up. All right, so if you're new to the stream, thanks for being here, number one. Thanks for giving me a little bit of your time. Thanks for listening. I'm not trying to be a sob story. Um, I'm just trying to keep you guys up to date because I don't got anyone else to talk to except for HR ladies and that's I don't want that's overwhelming and kind of anyways so tomorrow I'm I told my dad that I'm not gonna pay anything else for you I've been doing it for five years and that's it you have an ultimatum you can come get a Utah license and do Lyft and Uber and Grubhub and Uber Eats and DoorDash and make money and provide for yourself or go work at a Amazon's hiring here big time uh, I know it's not it's not a great job, but they, it's self sufficient, and they give you insurance, so he could go get medicine for depression or something. That'd be good. Um, or if he doesn't want to do that, if he doesn't come with me, if he doesn't work and provide for himself, then give me the keys to the car back, and I'm gonna sell it and pay it off, and not have this bill anymore because I can't. And that's it. So, yeah, that's where that's that's the ultimatum that I gave so far, and that's where we're at. What else? Yeah, and so then after after the last after the last stream, I texted him and I told him that, and he told me that I blindsided him with this. When in reality, he has an entire month to make one thousand three hundred dollars to pay his rent. From May first. Is a whole 31 days to make $1,300 and 50 for his phone and whatever, gas and stuff. You could make that work in 80 hours a week at Grubhub, Lyft, Uber, all those at the same time. You could do it. It wouldn't be easy, but it's better than me literally dying inside to do it. Anyways, he said I blindsided him and he told me that it would be better off if he had waited an extra day to go to the hospital so that way he'd be dead and it'd be easier on me and my mom and my sister and his parents back home because then no one would have to deal with him anymore. And I said, stop talking about death. And he said, it's true though. It would be, it, it would have been way easier for everybody if I had just died. And he does this whole guilt trip thing. And I said, stop gaslighting me. I'm not trying to. And I said, don't you care about me as your son? You know, I tried to flip the script on him, you know, because he plays the victim. So I tried to play the victim for a second just to see how he would react. And I'd be like, don't you care about me? I'm your son. Don't you just, don't you love me? Don't you want to have a relationship with me? Well, sorry for being sick. That's what he said. And I said, well, you're not sick anymore. $800 a week. Yeah, he could make that then. And so this is like, this is literally like the 20th time I've done this conversation with him. And he's like, okay, I'll come over. I'll come over. I'll come over. And I say, if you don't come over here tomorrow by 10 a.m., I'm done. I'm done with you. And then he'll show up the next day at like 1 p.m. And then I'll usually, I'll usually give. That's what I'll do. Because it's a, when you're standing, like it's easy to text mean stuff and it's easy to call and say mean stuff. But when someone's standing in front of you, it's, it gets a little bit more difficult. Pro tip, that's why you should try to get to the interview and just explain your situation because it's harder for them to dismiss you when you're there. It's kind of... Anyways. 
Yeah, that's that's usually what happens. How do I feel right now? I'm kind of hot. I'm a little hot and sweaty, to be honest. I'm kind of having some hot flashes. <laughs> Mainly just because it's really hot in my room. That's where I'm at. Rent 1300 seems high. Yeah, you and me both. 